Alrighty, um, I have a pretty negative video right now. Again, I warned you in the previous video, if you don't like negative feedback or thing on Canada's Wonderland, this is not the video for you. But after my experience today, I have had it with upper management of the food department. And I know that this is going to burn a bridge because they have been very nice to us. Um, but Surya and I have literally turned a blind eye um, to this department for so long. There are so many great people working in this department, by the way. Um, we're only talking about upper management. S supervisors, team leads, and the regular workers. Honestly, w this video is for you. Our conversations with many of you. Um, this video is literally for you and just everything we've witnessed. It is completely being run into the ground, the food department. And I'm just, I'm just going to go out there and say it. Um, I have 10 plus years experience in business management training for the one of the world's largest coffee company. And it is some of the best training I've ever had. And one of the most important things they teach their managers is to always be present. And when they say that, and when they teach you these things, it's to always be on the floor. You get very little off the floor time um, with this company and they teach you the importance of that and you really understand the business. You can tell that the upper management in the food department at Canada's Wonderland has no idea what they're doing. They hardly train their teams and you can tell and anyone who goes to Canada's Wonderland can probably vouch for this. Teams have no idea the sides you're supposed to get with your food. They guess, they guess portion sizes. Um, they are left stranded most of the time, understaffed beyond belief. Um, and this is, this was my experience today at this bar. This bar had just opened, okay, at a brand new restaurant. It should be your showcase. You should have it staffed beyond belief. One worker, one worker, okay? One poor little worker pouring, uh, having to ID put on the stupid ID wristband, okay? So that takes, that's literally 45 seconds right there to a minute. Ring through, pour the drinks, and then help the next guest. That's a lot for one worker having to do all that. You had the head of food in the distance standing watching her, and you had an area supervisor or whatever that person's position was standing there on their phone right next to her. I know that no jobs training is for these people to stand there and watch this poor girl work. And you cannot convince me you're a good manager if you are standing there not helping her. There is one area supervisor named Jeremy, and we've only seen him at Starbucks. I don't know this person, by the way. This isn't me defending him because I know him. We have no relationship to this person. But we were at Starbucks the other day. And he was on the floor working, commanding, teaching, coaching, cleaning, doing all of it. It reminded me of when I was a manager at a coffee shop. And that, to me, is a good leader. You, It was being run well. It was a long line all the way out the door. And I think we waited like 20 minutes in total. And, and no even good Starbucks could really accomplish that on the, the regular. So that's a really good accomplishment. But this is a common occurrence. It has been happening the entire season. Poor training, poor management, just always on their phone, walking by busy um, restaurants without getting involved. It just literally, like, we'll watch them walk into a restaurant, and it is clearly falling apart. And they'll walk out. They'll They'll leave. They won't go on the floor and coach and reassure. Uh, there's no positive feedback either. Like when teams are like out the line busy and like achieving things like that, the new upgraded restaurant, um, I always forget in Medfair right now. I'm so stressed just based off of my experience today. They'll walk in and, and there's no positive reinforcement and you can tell people hate working here and it's because of upper management. There's a famous saying, you could walk into an establishment and tell right away if the manager is good or not. And I'm sorry, but you can tell there is not a good manager at these food establishments. And that scares me because Wonderland and Cedar Fair have put so much money into this brand new restaurant and its menu's good. It looks good. It's It should be amazing. But I'm worried 
that the training isn't going to be up to par, that the leadership team isn't the right leadership team, and it's just going to fall apart. There's going to be long lines. It's going to be the food's not going to be cooked properly. There's going to be a lot of confusion. And that scares me because as a stockholder and a guest every year since I've essentially been born, I'm worried for my home park and the current state of the food department. And it sucks because we honestly had a decent relationship with a lot of these area soups and people that worked in food, higher ups, the head of food and some of the chefs. And I know that this is going to lead to a really tarnished relationship, but it's just I, I can't sit here and watch literally so many people hate working at Wonderland when Wonderland is not responsible for this. Like Wonderland is like a mini city. It has many subcategories and it's up to the leadership team in these subcategories to run those subcategories. And food is just one of those really missed opportunities. And it's again, so evident for anyone who works in business management or anyone who is a guest, just the amount of stress that is on those workers and the little amount of training that they're given. And it's just so frustrating. Just to share a personal experience, um, I had a job where I started as a, a manager, and there was an assistant manager at this job that was never on the floor, um, and they were constantly just watching Netflix in the back, and I remember it was about a month into my job, and I was already building a case um, to get rid of this person just because the, the morale of the team was really low because this person never helped them. And there was one night where this team was extremely busy and this assistant manager had agreed to take a supervisor's shift, which means that she, that person would be expected to work on the floor. Well, they got extremely busy and the ASM had left them two people to work the floor, which obviously is a really poor experience all around for both the workers and the guests. And that was my final straw. I do not tolerate that kind of experience for both guests and for the workers, and I'm just seeing it on the regular. Get off your phone and train. And if you don't have time to train, develop people to train. And if those people are not developing or able to train, then you need to hire and train and do whatever you need to do. I understand that hiring right now, especially in the food business, is extremely hard. But you guys are offering a really good wage for your foods employees. I looked it up online on Indeed, and what you're offering people, $18.50 an hour right now, that's a really decent wage. So it, it like you should be getting people in, but I guarantee you, you have a revolving door occurring right now. As a business manager, you have a revolving door. You have people coming in and leaving because one, poor training, poor morale, um, and just the leadership is not leadership. They are dictators. I'm gonna give another example, the rides department. You look at an area supervisor, area manager of rides, I see them on the ride platforms. I see them training. I see them, them, them present all the time. They're always there. I don't want to name names, but Heather Hill. I see her out and about all the time. I've seen her work rides. I've seen Heather Hill is always, like, if you know her, she's always out with the grabbers cleaning the park as well. Like, the rides department, you can tell. There's there's structure is the best way to look at it. There's training. There's a cohesive team. I mean, I, like from my personal experience, the entertainment department at Canada's Wonderland as well. Really well put together. Everyone's on the same page in that department. I mean, even when I had an issue like where I was being somewhat of a Karen to that department, it was just they were all together and they explained it and it was just a whole process and it made things resolved quickly but in the foods department it's a it's, it's a hot mess and honestly like my honest advice is i think wonderland needs restructuring i think they either need to go in and retrain the upper management set some new expectations like uh, with training and development and hiring and just their presence as area managers leaders area supervisors whatever you want to call these people um and just retrain restructure or, or hit the road i know that the pay in that department is really good and I think that, you know, looking at the other Cedar Fair parks, they are run way better in the food department. And I think Wonderland has a lot of area of opportunity. I don't think it's impossible. I really like the direction Wonderland's heading. And I just think the leadership in the food department right now definitely needs that little investment to help with the big investments that Cedar Fair is throwing at us. Anyways, 
I didn't want this video to be too negative. I'm really sorry if I offended anyone. I know it's impossible for me not to have offended anyone, but this is just my opinions. And I had to stand up for both the guests and the workers at Canada's Wonderland. It's just a really not so great working environment and I don't think the park is aware to how bad it is and I, I would really like the park to be made aware of how bad it is and now I know when I'm walking around the park and I see an area supervisor or something in the foods department that there's again that tarnished relationship but I really don't care I don't owe you anything I um and an influencer at Canada's Wonderland. I cover Canada's Wonderland. And it, it's just gotten to a point where I can't sit there and watch you guys literally burn um, these major investments in the park to the ground. And I have a really scary feeling that unless something's done, that this restaurant isn't going to live up to its 100% potential that Cedar Fair is expecting from it. So please, if you are an area supervisor or higher at Canada's Wonderland and watching this video, just invest in training. Please, with the team at this restaurant, invest in their training. Double check. Go back. When you're in there, actually stand next to them and work with them. It would be such a shame to watch this just crumble in terms of guest experience with how big of an investment it is. Anyways, I'm going to stop ranting right now. Again, I just, I couldn't not make this video after my experience with the new bar today. It was truly a disappointment um, as a business manager, as a stockholder, and as a guest. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I'm sorry if this video offends anyone, um, and have a good one. Bye.